Hello friends and welcome back. I'm Sarah Liz and I'm really excited to share today's projects with you. This is a pop-up box card. It's one of my very favorites and I go in stages where I make a whole bunch and then I kind of forget about it and then I make a whole bunch. My oldest son requested one of these for his birthday and I thought why don't I make a video about this. So his birthday is come and gone, um, but I'm making a few Christmas cards using this design, and this is the first one. It folds flat into an A2 sized envelope, and it's got a little tray to kind of pull it out and make sure it actually pops out of the envelope. I'm starting with a 10 by five and a half inch piece of cardstock. This is 80 pound, but if you have 100 pound, that would be better. I'm scoring this at two and a half, five, and seven and a half inches. And then we're gonna flip it and score at two and a half and five. So we're making squares. You could adjust the size, um, just keep everything square. And then we're gonna cut away those gray areas. And I will put that template on my blog post. So if you'd like to download that and, and have that with you, I will make sure that that is available. I'm using my Fiskars trimmer here and I have just lined up the edge of the cardstock at two and a half and then I'm flipping it over and I'm doing the same thing and I'm cutting through that half inch section and through the first two and a half inch cube and then stopping in theory right at the score line. Uh, I, I fell a little short on one of them but we'll fix that. You do not need a trimmer like this to do it. Um, it's, it's a really fairly forgiving style. And so if you're steady with a pair of scissors, you can just cut those pieces away. Um, I've done it with a craft knife. Uh, if you just fold the whole thing in half, like a side fold card, uh, you, can, you can cut it away very quickly and get that whole middle section out. I'm also cutting the tab off of one side but not the other. On the other side, I'm going to miter the edges so that when I glue that into my box, you definitely aren't going to see it and it's not going to catch on anything. So I am folding all of my score lines as mountain folds. Once we do that, um, we're going to add a couple more score lines. We could have done it earlier, but I was hoping it would be easier to see those folds on this light colored cardstock. The second example, it's maybe a little easier. Uh, I'm taking a ruler and I am going to score a line from that inside corner to the outside corner. I'm just using a ballpoint pen that doesn't work anymore for this. I find that it really gets in there and works for me a little better than a stylus sometimes. These diagonal folds, I'm folding in the opposite directions. These are valley folds. Um, in comparison to all of the other score lines. Those corner pieces are going to fold into the middle of the box and it gives us a place to string our rubber band, which is the mechanism that helps the whole thing to pop open. So I'm gonna take my glue and I'm adding it just to one of the triangles in each of the corners. This is barely art glue, it'll work just fine for this. You could maybe use a double-sided tape, um, but I test it out. There's a lot of strain and pressure on this because that rubber band is pulling against the seams a lot. Um, and so I really believe that wet glue is by far your better option on this. If you're gonna use a double-sided tape, I would go with Lawn Fawn, um, they have a really good one or like a be creative tape, the score tape. Some of the other brands that I've tried and I've made boxes like this with them, they pull apart over time. Um, and so it, it, just keep an eye on that. So I clipped my triangles down so it doesn't need to be exact. Um, I'm just going from the score line in towards the middle. And then I punched a small hole in each side and I'm gonna take my scissors and just clip right into the middle. I need a way to move my rubber band into that hole so it, it has a place to get in there. 
we have a couple of options for rubber bands. Um, this is the Pale Crepe Gold Number no. 12 Softest Stretch, and this is my favorite option. And I like to use two. You don't need to, but I don't know. I Maybe it gives it more pop. Uh, so I'm just stringing two in between those two. I'm going to pull them out while I assemble the box, but it's easier to show you right now while this is open. And what happens is that when you lay it flat, you're pulling those rubber bands apart. And then the box, the rubber bands want to come back together and shrink up. And so that's where the spring action comes from. You don't have to get those. Um, this is a rubber band I got in my grocery store pickup order. I didn't pick them out. It's nothing fancy. And so in the second card, I'll show you how to use those and make those work. Next, uh, I'm going to take my flap here and I'm going to add glue just to that flap. And then I'm going to fold the box flap to, to glue that shut. It's really important that we're double checking always to make sure the box is going to fold flat. If I had just tried to like line it up while the box was open, I run the risk of things not fitting into the envelope very well. So I've added my rubber bands back inside. Okay. And when it goes into the envelope, that's how it's going to go in. I'm going to pull them wide and they will spring back together. Um, you can see my, my cardstock buckled just a little bit on one side because I wasn't being very careful and it's only 80 pound. Um, we'll fix that later. So I am using the home for the holidays die set from Concord and ninth. This came out last year, I want to say, and I really liked it, uh, but I didn't buy it and I hemmed and I hawed and I, so I gave in this year I bought it and I'm so mad at myself for waiting so long. I love this thing. It makes three different houses uh, and they come together really, really quickly. And they're so cute. There's a ton of dies in this set too. And the price point is pretty good. So the magic number I found was three. I just took every die that cuts out part of a house and cut it out of three colors. So I have each piece in three different colors and then I could mix and match and kind of figure out um, how I wanted to put everything together. I know you're, <laughs> you're seeing four colors right now um, if you count the gray and that's because I cut it out from three colors two different times. I made a ton of these. I loved this box card and so I'm just making a whole boatload um, of these cards. It also comes with four separate sizes of tree dies and some snow um, toppers, I guess, for those. So I cut the snow out of some white iridescent -y glitter cardstock. And then I used another die from the set to cut out some snowy hills. And I'm just going to work my way around this box, decorating little snowy scenes. So I want to make sure I'm leaving a place on the box to write my message. In the meantime, I have three other sides to decorate. So there's three houses in the set, three sides of the box. This worked out beautifully. For each side, um, I'm kind of working one at a time. And I found out pretty quickly that my Barely Art Glue wasn't my best choice here because I have glitter cardstock on the bottom. Barely Art will stick to it, but it takes a while to dry enough that it holds. So for the first side, I ended up holding it with my reverse tweezers for a while, but then I switched to my Nubo Deluxe Adhesive. I find that it grabs on pretty quickly and is great for some of our slicker surfaces. I can't hardly find it anywhere these days. Um, if this is a glue you're familiar with, if you know where to find it, please let me know in the comments below because this bottle is about half gone and I'm panicking because I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet uh, when it runs out. Um, or if you have another glue that you really like that's great for non-porous surfaces, I would love to know about it. Um, I did cut all the bases of the houses out one more time from a dark gray cardstock so I could fill in those window pieces since it does cut a hole clear through clear through 
Um, I have plans in my head for another box or another card that uses these houses and puts some vellum back there. I just got a whole bunch of lights from Pear Blossom Press um, and I, I'm looking forward to making a little light up village with some of these. Um, I'm adding some soapy bubbles confetti sequins from Trinity Stamps. These don't have a hole in them. So they felt a little bit more like snow to me and the iridescence kind of matched the white glitter cardstock. Right there is the pink square that I glued onto the side where I want to write my message and that's the side that buckled a little bit. So I fixed it by just covering that up and strengthening it. This is a piece of five and a half by five and a half inch cardstock and I scored it at four and a quarter. So the back of that um, is A2 sized. Right, and that will fit beautifully inside of our envelope. And then I'm just using a little Distress Ink and my Blending Buddy tool and adding a little bit of shading around the outside for a little extra interest. I love these Blending Buddies. I didn't know that I needed them, but I'm gonna go ahead and say I needed them. Um, I have lots of blending brushes, but they always feel a little awkward to hold and my hand gets kind of tired. Um, and this one was like a dream. So if you're in the market for a blending tool, um, those was worth, worth mentioning. I added a few little like snowflakey star things with my white gel pen. And then I'm adding a fa la la, uh, die cut sentiment from scrapbook.com. And I love that little guy. He just, he's fun and he's quirky and he ends up on lots of my cards. I'm gonna fit just the base of that into my envelope and then I'm gonna push this flat so that I'm stretching that rubber band and I'm gonna ease it right on into the envelope. Um, it has a little bit of bulk, but I, I can still mail this for a single stamp and then it pops up this one has such spring in it. It pops up a long ways. So uh, I, I think that card is my favorite. I think of all of them I've made. This second one is much, much quicker. If you were gonna mass produce this and you didn't have a lot of time, you hands down could do it. This card took me 20 minutes start to finish, um, including all of the cutting, um, and sort of measuring and remeasuring because I messed a few things up. And that's when I made just one. If I were to assembly line this, I could do it a whole lot faster. I could probably make one of these in 10 minutes. So here I'm starting with that same size. It's 10 by five and a half inches and I'm scoring at two and a half, five and seven and a half, and then at two and a half and five. Okay, so again, the template is on the website. Um, it, if you want to download that and keep that for reference. Again, I'm using my Fiskars trimming tool. I don't use this cutter a whole lot, but I can't get rid of it because it's so great for things like this, where I just want a really precise cut or I want to start or end in the middle of something and my guillotine trimmer just can't handle it. So I'm going to bring in my scissors and neatly clip the very corners of that and get that out of there. And then I'm gonna trim off one of the tabs. I'm kind of folding it over here so you can see it a little bit better. Hopefully the darker cardstock is making these score lines easier to see and follow along a little bit. Then I'm creating my diagonal score lines in the corners, right from that inside corner to the outside corner. Okay, you could clip the corner ahead of time, it would go um, from on the short side, that middle score line to the first score line, right? Um, but I just found it easier to, to glue and assemble everything first. So whatever you think is easier. Um, I broke out the bone folder here, totally not necessary, right? <laughs> like uh, habit, I guess. And so I'm creasing all of my score lines and I'm adding my glue once again to just one of each of those corners and then I'll kind of fold it flat and give it a press. I am going to 
open this up and once I'm kind of making sure everything's going to fit the way I need it to, uh, I can clip down those triangles one more time and we'll punch our hole and clip right into the hole and then move on to decorating. I have a hoard of patterned paper. Like I've gotten rid of a lot, but I have a hoard left. And so <laughs> um, this is going to be a really great way for me to use some of that up on both some holiday cards and some birthday cards. Um, so I'm going to fold this flat and then we'll decorate before we actually add the rubber band. But remember, I did promise I would show you how to use any rubber band that you have. Um, and we can shorten it up and tighten it up if we need to. This is uh, the ho 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 that comes out of, it's a new photo play die set. I'll link it below. Um, and I'm cutting three. I wanted a little bit of dimension. And then I have mats and layers. So the mats are that the red cardstock. Remember the squares on our box are two and a half inches. So I cut the red piece at two and a quarter. And then the top piece, the pattern paper, and then one of them is cream, is two and an eighth. I happen to have a die that cut at two and an eighth, um, but certainly you don't need a die to do that. You could just cut those by hand. If I'm mass producing, that's faster, right? Than running something through the die cutting machine a whole bunch of times, because um, I only have one die. So uh, something to keep in mind, and that would absolutely make this go really, really fast. I wanted some dimension in my sentiment. So I'm gluing together three of these ho, ho, ho dies. And this is a pretty easy one. There aren't a lot of fine, detailed, thin pieces. Uh, but even so, I got a little exuberant on that last one, and I've got a little bit of glue that oozed out the side. So I'm just using my craft pick and cleaning that up. Next, we're going to add our layers to our box. I'm using 80 pound cardstock for the box again, and this is a cheat for that. So if I'm adding a whole bunch of mats and layers, it's gonna stiffen that up, it's gonna make it a lot sturdier, and you wouldn't even know um, that this was a slightly thinner cardstock. Again, if, if you have 100 pound, that's what I would recommend if you're doing something like the first box where you aren't covering the entire outside of the box with other layers. So then I realized that I had cut the ho 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 from red and my mat from red. So I went and off camera, I cut the shadow layer from a cream that I thought matched the pattern paper pretty well. Once I get that glued down, I'm gonna add some shimmer pen cause it's Christmas. Uh, and I thought that went really nicely with the pattern paper. There's a little bit of like a glossy, glittery texture on some of the elements of the paper. So this helped it all tie together a little better. And then I'm adding the ho 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 and it's going to overhang that two and a half inch square a little bit, but that's okay. This box when folded flat isn't quite five and a half inches. So I do have a little room to play. Um, and still have everything fit into an A2 envelope. So now we're gonna add our rubber band. Um, inside, I'm gonna try to show you what I'm doing, but honestly, most of this uh, I, did, I do by feel. So <laughs> excuse me while I fumble and bumble around and try and show it on camera. I have slipped half of that rubber band through the slit and into the hole on one side of the box. Okay, so you can see it right in there. That slit still kind of hangs open a little bit, but that's typically okay. It's not a huge deal. And then I'm gonna try to find the other hole and slide that in. Um, and in theory, we're done. But if you're using a rubber band, brought like a mystery rubber band, <laughs> you wanna check it, right? So I'm pressing it down and it just doesn't have the pop that I want to see. So I'm going to check one more time in case I let it go in some odd funky way, but nope, um, I'm not happy with it. So I pulled the rubber band out of one side because I'm lazy. This would have been easier if I'd pulled it out of both. 
and I'm tying another knot. If I had pulled the rubber band all the way out, I probably could have gotten those knots to sit right next to each other instead of on top of each other. And that would have reduced the bulk on this card a little bit, something to keep in mind. Um, but then I'm just gonna slide it back in there and we'll test it again. So I'm holding it down with my finger and definitely that one popped up quite a bit more than the first version. Um, or the first version of this card. It doesn't pop up as high as the first card. And that's just because the other rubber band is really a special kind of magic. This piece of red cardstock is five and I think it was five and a quarter by five and a half, but only because I measured it wrong and I wasn't gonna let it go to waste. And instead of ink blending and adding another die cut, I just cut out a piece of pattern paper that was a quarter inch smaller. So um, for an A2, that would be five and a quarter by four inches. I like to slide this part way into the envelope before I add the cube, right? I'm stretching the rubber band as I fold it flat and then I'll tuck it in there. And that just helps me make sure I don't tear the envelope um, because that rubber band wants to pop open and there's a lot of pressure on the side um, as you're sort of first sliding it in there. Ask me how I know. So I'm going to pull this out and you can see it pops up pretty well. It pops up a little better if you pull it out a little faster. So something to keep in mind if you're um, <laughs> sad that it's not popping up as much as you want. So these are the two cards that we made today, but I want to show you a few more that I've made. This one is using the Spellbinders, I think it was the Kaleidoscope tile. It's discontinued, but if you can find it, it is absolutely stunning. This is the one my son asked for. And the these are the tiny box critter add-ons from Lawn Fawn, and they fit so beautifully on here. And this is the one that Finnegan, my demanding four-year-old, asked for that really got me started on this whole journey. Um, and so I guess a big thank you to Finnegan. This box is slightly bigger. It does not fit into an A2. I think I used a mini slimline envelope for that one since that happy birthday was overhanging so much. If you don't like making cards with lots of measuring and cutting, then there are dies that do this. And Karen Berniston just came out. I think hers is called the Surprise Cube. I made this card with a an old die that's been discontinued for a long time. But Karen Berniston's I think is about the same size and it comes with dies for mats and layers. So definitely worth looking into. I'll link that one below as well. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, maybe consider subscribing. I'm looking forward to a bunch of new things I have planned for next year. Um, and I appreciate you spending this time with me. I will see you next time.